I've been visiting the mountains now probably for the best part of my life and I've seen them change quite dramatically over this time. I can recall early years of bushwalking in the mountains when you would see the damage that had been caused by the stock and the lack of vegetation cover, the lack of grass cover. It's different now. There's a much stronger grass cover as a result of the soil conservation works. If we lose our alpine humus soils, then we lose that water delivery to our irrigation areas out west, to our, our cities and towns in the west. So important that these soils are maintained for the health of not just the alpine area, but for the whole of South East Australia. Basically creates such a beautiful, clear flow in the streams that really everybody appreciates from the alpine area. These soils are unique, they're iconic and they're essential for so many of our ecosystems and our water supply. They are also fragile and in danger. There are still significant threats to the alpine soils. These come from the increasing intensity of visitation, the development around resorts and significantly from feral animals such as horses, pigs and deer. These alpine soils are only found in this small region, these alpine humus soils. The high organic matter in the soils are very vulnerable to loss from disturbance but also from a change in temperature. So climate change is a significant threat and a major management issue into the future. The most important consideration for managing the erosion in the high country has been the re-establishment of the ground cover. The consequences of the, of the loss of that organic matter would be significant erosion of the soils, uh, sediment being delivered to rivers, uh, clogging up rivers, but eventually getting down into the storages, the, the infrastructure that, that uh, currently exists within the, uh, the dams uh, around the region. So there will be also a significant loss in the substrate upon which most of the ecological communities rely on. Recovery in the Alpine areas is very slow and in fact some areas really will not recover. If that soil is lost, if, those, if that organic matter is lost, then uh, it would be very, very difficult for those species to survive in those locations. Today we had two of our colleagues who have actually worked on the project in the late 60s and early 70s and were able to appreciate fully the difference that their work had created to the Alpine environment. Yes, I was very impressed looking at the improvement of the landscape. I was here 47 years ago <laughs> and uh, my recollections was just bare ground and stone. At that time I thought there was about 10 or 20 per cent vegetation and now it looked like it was up to about 60 to 80 per cent. A much greater increase in ground cover but also in height. It was my first job with the Soil Conservation Service and my job was to spread the hay on top of the, after the seeds had been sown and then the bitumen and fertiliser mix was spread on top of the hay mulch to prevent it from blowing away. When we were walking there today with our Soil Knowledge Network colleagues, it was fantastic to be able to show them the country, to show them how far it has come since the soil conservation works have been carried out. It really has improved with the re-establishment of the ground cover on the disturbed grazed areas. We could also see the drainage lines were in much better condition than the, uh, the gullied out incised condition they had when the uh, stock was removed from the park. The Alps is a unique environment and it has a special place in the hearts of anybody who visits here. I'd just like to uh, acknowledge and, and give credit to the National Parks for the way they've managed this part of Australia, the roof of Australia. It feels great, it feels really good. <laughs>